today on the bench I've got this crappy little Craig LCD. This is a little HD set and we've got no sound. Something like this you normally wouldn't think is worth uh, putting any time and effort into but I like to tinker and I want to see what's gone wrong with this. So let's get this puppy cracked open and see what's going on inside it. So we'll just pop the screws up the back of this unit and uh, take a look at how simple this thing is inside. It'll be one circuit board, maybe two. A timing controller board for the display and a signal board. It's going to be very very basic inside this thing. Uh, almost laughable it's going to be so basic. Two thousand and nine, so it's yeah, you know, it's a few, it's a couple years old. It's uh, what five years old, I guess, is set today. As you can see, the front panel just pops off of these things. They just they got screws in them, but they're they're just held on by little plastic clips. So remove the front panel. Here's our liquid crystal display, and this same set is probably sold under a dozen different uh, brands. So I always have to remove the display itself. It's probably two or three screws that hold the display in. And uh, in behind here we'll have our control boards. That's rather slippery of them. There's actually screws underneath these brackets I thought I could take out but apparently I have to actually remove the display with these small screws because the corner of the display is actually covering up one of the screws that I need to take out so I actually have to remove the display from the bracket There's our liquid crystal display. I didn't need to remove these other screws here, so I think what I'll do is I'll just put them back in place. This is a standard LG uh, display panel, and I might even have a board that might work. From the last television of this type of design, I have a board that might even be the same. Looks like the uh, it looks like the LVDS connector is probably might not be the same. Nope, not quite. It's got a few more wires on it. Connector looked close, but uh, looking at the actual twisted pair here it looks like they're different configuration similar panel I think this one came out of a 19 inch so let's get this thing on and see if we can figure out where the sound is going why we're not getting any sound so we got the scope hooked up if we take a look we've got audio going in on both my left and right input but we have no output coming out so I'm just gonna scope down here and see whether there's anything coming out on the speaker leads. First of all, make sure we don't have a bad speaker. Let's go down to my, I think this is the audio amplifier probably down here. Just take a look and see if there's any audio signals on any of these pins. Maybe not. There's, oh, I heard something there, so. Oh, what do we know? What do we know? We have something in this audio circuit that's muting. Interesting. Huh. I would have to say that whatever our problem is, it's right in this area here. What I'm doing is I'm shorting two pins together on this IC. It's pin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's pin
pin seven and eight. I wonder if I look up the uh, spec on this IC and see what that is, whether that's a muting input. But the uh, sound was cutting in and out, and now of course the sound is cut out completely. And just when I was running my probe across there, I made a connection where two pins actually touched together momentarily, and the sound came back. I'm just going to pull the board out and actually take a look. Maybe we have a bad connection on the bottom of this board. And for those wondering what, what drew me to this area of the circuit, our speaker's plugged into here. So I went out on a limb that this IC was going to be the amplifier IC down here. Let's see if we can look at them, see what the, what the number of it is here on camera. Let's see if we can look it up and see what, uh, what it is. Let's see if we can find any, any uh, info on this, this IC. So as I thought, a YD1517P is a, an amplifier. I was able to get some data on it. Remember how I said I bridge pins 7 and 8 together? Wouldn't you know, pin 7 and 8 is your standby mute. So I'm thinking we're going to pull the board out here and see whether we've got a, uh, a connection that's gone open. If not, pin 7 and 8 are going to get bridged together because uh, it'll then work. But uh, let's pull the board and see whether the uh, problem is a, a connection problem underneath there. I'm not uh, about to spend much time on this thing because this is kind of a project I took on for my neighbor who uh, gave me a shout and said his TV wasn't working. He actually was blaming it on his um, his TV service coming in and I went and took a look at it and found out it had nothing to do with his uh, cable box. It was actually the TV that was the problem. So I told him I would uh, take a look at it and see if it was anything minor and this looks to be, this definitely I think uh, qualifies as a minor problem. So one way or another we're going to make this thing work. We're either going to fix the problem if it's a solder connection that's broken on the board or we're going to uh, bypass that muting ability of the uh, the circuit. Now of course these things they got screws everywhere so I got to pull a couple more screws out here that hold the uh, hold the board in and then the thing should just lift out and again it, it could be something as simple as just a solder connection that's broken. That's what I'm hoping because it was intermittent when he had it and when I was uh, when I was over at his house and I was I was actually moving the HDMI uh, input and the, the uh, sound was cutting in and out so I'm thinking it's probably just going to be a cracked solder connection and when I was moving the connection around here I was causing enough flex on the circuit board to uh, make the connection uh, reconnect and it go out of the mute mode so now we've got the board undone we can pull the circuit board out and take a look at this IC which is right down here I'm just gonna get my magnifying glass out so I can look at this a little closer we'll just zoom the camera and maybe you'll see it on camera see if there's any pins that look to be bad so according to my schematic our mute lead is pin number eight which would be this pin right here and it goes over here this little connection here, I'm just going to take a closer look at that. It kind of looks like that might even be kind of flaky. I don't know. But we'll uh, take a closer look at that. Pin 7 is the supply power, which is, uh, that'll be that one, right? 7, 8, and 9. If I bridge these two together, it'll always have sound. The sound will never shut off. But he mutes the sound through his set-top box anyway. He doesn't use the volume on the TV. The remote control for his um, cable box won't control the volume or the power on the TV. So he uses the volume control on his cable box to actually control the sound. So if I disable the muting ability of the TV, it's, it's not going to cause a problem in this case because uh, he doesn't use the volume on the TV anyway. He uses it through his cable box. So we may end up doing that. If I don't find something obvious, like a cold solder connection or something very obvious, we'll be, we'll be bridging pins 7 and 8 together here just to give it a permanent sound. So I think at this point in the game, uh, it's, it's just time to bypass that entire um, 
switching circuit because uh, this is something that we're not going to be putting much time and money into. Actually, so we're just going to bypass that switching and just leave it on all the time. Or at least leave it on when the set's turned on. There we go. That should uh, that should bridge those two pins quite nicely. Let's put the board back in and test it. Gotta love these things. Just you know, they got ground terminals mounted on the board, or marked on the board, copper, bare copper, like it's going to ground to something. But uh, you, you don't get a ground when you screw it into plastic, with the exception of the. Uh, the LVDS ground here. That tab will actually ground to the board. But nothing else is grounded on this thing. It's ridiculous. We have liftoff, as they say. There we go, we have sound. Problem is solved. Nice, simple, easy repair for a Super Bowl afternoon. Now I can go and watch the football game as I prep to uh, sit down and uh, watch the Super Bowl. We can put this set together. The volume should work on here too. We should be able to turn it down, which I can. There we go. We'll have another happy camper. One thing I just learned from this is these pieces are different. It's uh, easy to get them mixed up. So if you take one of these things apart, keep note of which one goes where because uh, they the uh, LCD tabs won't line up if you get them reversed, which is what I just did. I just had them reversed here momentarily. And I was wondering why the display would not line up with the tabs and then I realized that uh, the they are slightly different this is really quite a nice uh, this is really quite a nice uh, disc I've got here I wish I had this in I wish I had this on in high definition this would look really great uh, in HD it's aerial um, footage through the Grand Canyon Oops. Now, that's because I'm on the wrong, I'm not quite centered here. I gotta go down one tab. That's another thing. Is that they got three holes on here, so you gotta kinda remember which one what was uh, tied down to. Otherwise the panel itself won't line up with the um, bracket. So once I get that screwed in place, now the panel lines up. Again, there's two sets of holes on here, so be careful because if you mount it on the wrong one, it's not going to line up with the uh, with the bezel of the of the uh, front of the television. I think I got it right there this time. And these are glass panels, so you have to, they are quite fragile. You can't uh, apply any. Um, force to them at all or they're gonna break just two pieces of glass is all a liquid crystal display is made up of it doesn't take much to break them and they're not very thick glass either they have a plastic laminate uh, coating on them secured on the panel Snap the front back on and uh, reassemble the, the screws. And this sucker is done. So there's the panel reattached. Let's go grab the bezel for it.
There we go. Good as new. To, to give you an idea what this function of the uh, muting was. Okay, it's uh, the only function of that muting circuit in there so that you don't get a pop when you first turn the set on. You'll notice when I turn it on, be a little bit of a tick, a pop, as the amplifier comes online. You turn it off. And a little pop. That's all that's for. That's all that switching circuit is there for is to kill that pop when the unit comes on so you don't hear it. So now this switch is always in the on position so we won't have a problem with the uh, standby muting on this thing. Uh, causing us any more problem.